السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Ask Huda and uh, our phone numbers and the contact informations are as follows area code 002-023855132 alternatively area code 002-01005469323 uh, WhatsApp numbers air code 001-347-80625 and finally air code 001-361-491503 Facebook page is M Salah Official and we have also uh, we're live on the YouTube channel uh, that is uh, DR Muhammad Salah. Um, let me tackle some of your pending questions from the previous episode while waiting for your calls. Muhammad from the KSA, uh, he quoted a statement uh, of uh, Ibn al-Jawzi in his uh, marvelous book, Sayyid al-Khatir. لَيْسَ مَنْ رَقَعَ وَخَاطْ كَمَنْ ثَوْبُهُ صحيح, Which means that a person whose thawb is full of patches, stitches, is not the same like a person whose thawb is neat, is intact and whole, doesn't have any patches. And by that he was referring to uh, what his question was, how can we understand that and does it mean that we cannot get to paradise because of what we did before? Absolutely not. All the Quranic references and the hadith refute that. We read in the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, the Almighty Allah says, "Inna nafsala amaratun bisu'i illa ma rahim Rabbi, inna Rabbi ghafurur rahim." So this is a human nature to be inclined into sinning, to sometimes comply with the woman desire, or fall in the traps of Satan. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the same hadith, "All." The children of Adam are sinners by nature. And the best of the sinners are those who repent whenever they sin. And when the Prophet said to Amr ibn al As, may Allah be pleased with him, don't you know that accepting Islam remits the previous sins? Don't you know that Al Hijrah remits the previous sins? Uh, Hajj, Tawbah. Repenting unto Allah, sincere repentance does not only remit the previous sins. Check out the ayat of Surah Al-Furqan. When Allah the Almighty spoke about some of the major sins including shirk, committing adultery, and killing. And the fate of those who indulge into those uh, previous major sins. Then he says, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ But whoever repents, even after committing adultery, after drinking, after any of the major sins, if the person repented, and his repentance was sincere, and furthermore he followed that by doing good, righteous deeds, guess what? Not only that, their sins will be forgiven and they can make it to paradise. Rather, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Such people يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Allah will exchange their bad deeds into good deeds. Subhanallah. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So, it is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hadid in Ayah number 10, لَا يَسْتَوِي مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْفَتْحِ وَقَاتَلْ but he says, وَكُلًّا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَةِ When he said, أُولَٰئِكَ أَعْظَمُ دَرَجَةً مِنَ الَّذِينَ أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ بَعْدُ وَقَاتَلُوا But the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وكل وعد الله الحسنى all will enter paradise the ayah is referring to a comparison between those who have made hijra those who have spent in a charity uh, before the conquest of Mecca and supported the deen they sacrificed their wealth their souls themselves uh, versus those who accepted Islam after the conquest of Mecca were accepting Islam was a lot easier and does not cost much versus those who have to sacrifice whatever they were chased uh, the uh, you know they were at big risk so obviously those who accepted Islam before the conquest of Mecca and they donated in charity before the conquest of Mecca they are greater in reward than those who accepted Islam after the conquest of Mecca then Allah the Almighty says but both Allah the Almighty promised them paradise but Al-Jannah is not like uh, one single level and everybody will be in the same level. No. Some people will be in higher levels than others. So those who have made hijrah and sacrificed their wealth and they fought for the sake of Allah and they were persecuted on account of their faith, they will have greater reward than those who accepted Islam after the conquest of Mecca were accepting Islam would not cost them anything rather they will be given perhaps wealth money camels sheep but all of them will enter paradise but those are in a higher place in Al Jannah in Surah Al Waqi'ah Allah the Almighty says about the three categories of people on the day of judgment السابقون, the foremost, those who occupy Al Firdaus Al A'la, the highest place in heaven. Most of them will be from the first generation of the companions because of their sacrifices, because of their uh, religious commitment. And then there will be also people from among us, but they will not be the majority of Ahlul Jannah. وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنَ الْآخِرِينَ The following ayah uh, uh, number 14 says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنَ الْآخِرِينَ So it doesn't say that you will not enter paradise. It says, yes, you will enter, but not in the same level. التَّوْبَةُ تَجُبُّ مَا قَبْلَهَا Repenting unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remits whatever sins were committed before. Muhammad from India, assalamu alaikum and thank you for waiting. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program. Go ahead, Muhammad. Are you still there? Yeah, uh, brother, uh, my son uh, is going to get a job in uh, Doha Bank in Qatar. Is going to get what? Yeah, in in Qatar, he, he, he got an opportunity to work for Doha Bank. Uh, is that uh, the, the salary is uh, halal uh, if he works for the bank? Tayyib, Akhi Muhammad, basically when you name the bank, it will not help me in making the decision. What helps me in making the decision is, is it an Islamic bank? Does it do Islamic finance? Uh, is it Sharia compliant? Name doesn't really matter. So if you say the Bank of Mecca or the Bank of Japan, what matters is, is it a conventional bank? Does it give loans with interest? Does it give you interest when you deposit your money there? If it is so, then no, it is not permissible to work in this bank. Barakallahu feek. Thank you, Muhammad from India. The Almighty Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الرِّبَاءِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ 
فإن لم تفعلوا فأذنوا بحرب من الله ورسوله وإن تبتم فلكم رؤوس أموالكم لا تظلمون ولا تظلمون Oh, you believe. Fear Allah and keep your duty to him. Leave and abandon, quit and cease all dealings of usury. If you truly believe. But if you don't, then the Almighty Allah and his messenger both declare war against you. So one has to be careful, especially with regards to his earning and what he feeds himself and his family members with. In the sound hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَعَنَ الله الربا آكله ومؤكله وكاتبه وشاهديه May Allah curse all transactions which is interest based, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Then he furthermore explained, Akilahu, the person who charges interest, who takes riba. Mu'kilahu, and the person who pays interest. Wakatibahu, the accountant, or the banker, or the person who concludes a writing, let it be a lawyer, a banker, an accountant. Washahidai, and the witnesses. They're just witnessing, but they're witnessing an evil transaction. A transaction which has riba in it is one of the worst sins. There is no other punishment in the Quran for any sin which matches the punishment of dealing with riba. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Um Muhammad from the United Kingdom. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Um Muhammad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking, Sister Um Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. Um, just while I was waiting, I didn't hear the question, but I heard you talking about riba, and uh, our question is uh, uh, is linked to this sort of. Um, we'd like a little bit of clarification, please. Um, several years ago, uh, we decided to invest in a, a property, and uh, it was before my time of Islam, but my husband obviously was Muslim uh, at the time. Um, uh, we invested it we, we we wanted to buy a property and we um uh, bought it we invest, we signed up for a mortgage uh, obviously interest based mortgage uh, alhamdulillah Allah, watching your programs we realized that um, uh, we gained knowledge and understanding this was the wrong thing to do so we changed um to what we believe was an islamic mortgage here in the uk um uh, our, my first question is, um, we have, we've managed to calculate the interest that we paid over the time that we were with the previous mortgage. Um, if we, uh, I, uh, we both thought that if we changed to an Islamic mortgage, then we'd done the right thing and that was the problem cleared. But recently we've had, um, or I've heard something that um, we still need to do something with the money that was paid. So if I can have some clarification on that, please. So if we... Um, relieve ourselves of, of this interest money. Um, does that make our house halal to live in? Is the first question. Okay. Uh, please. I got your and, question, um, Sister Umu Muhammad, but n n now I, I know I have another question. But this is interest that you paid, not interest that you charged. Correct? No, yeah, it was interest that we paid on the mortgage for having the mortgage, okay. yes. Okay. Your second question, please. Yeah. Um, so the second question is, um, um, I we then we the, oh the, yeah the second question is if if I relieve my we relieve ourselves of this money if that's what we have to do, um, obviously I can I give it away and I have no reward for giving this money away. But if I give this money to people who I know, I, I, I obviously I feel a little bit like I need to explain the situation to them because I don't want them feeling that I gain reward from giving them money. For example, is is that correct? is what I'd like to ask. Got your questions. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and just sorry, just one other question linked to that. Is, would it be possible, please, uh, Sheikh, to maybe through your administration to send you the details of the, um, the bank that we transferred to and finished our mortgage with, which was an Islamic bank, so that you could please tell us if it was 100% halal, and if not, obviously we need to deal with the interest on that account. Okay, you can actually get... Uh... 
the email address and the contact information from uh, uh, the control, inshallah. They will be happy to share with you. And uh, now, uh, if we don't have another call, inshallah, we'll be happy to answer your question or questions. Okay. So, when somebody says, well, we purchased uh, a property with mortgage, and later on, we didn't know. We didn't know. Later on, when we found out, we seized, we transferred it to an Islamic mortgage, a halal loan, a goodly loan, or an investment, and we quit that. That by itself is tawbah. The ayah which I just quoted, and you heard it when I was uh, um, reciting it, in answering the previous question of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah the Almighty says, فَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ is addressing those who charge interest. They invest in giving loans and then they collect interest on that. So if you repent, then you can only take your capital sum. And what about the interest? What about the riba? No, don't take it. You neither wrong nor get wronged. So in this case, if you repented, as the ayah said, in tubitum, you are not charging, you are paying. Alhamdulillah, you didn't know before, and now you knew, you quit, barakallahu feek. You want to give in a charity in order to support your repentance, this is great. Unspecific amount. Any amount that you choose, especially because that was for the purpose of uh, uh, investment. The problem is with those who charge and now then they repented. So this money which they collected from riba, they must get rid of. And when they get rid of, they give it in a charity for innocence. It's not an act of charity. I mean, they shouldn't expect to receive a reward for it. Al because they donated. No, they are getting rid of this money. If the loan was like I took a loan from you, and you charged me 10%. So you repented, you say, you know, you know what, just give me my capital sum. Or even, alhamdulillah. This is what the ayah says. But whenever somebody has to put his money in a bank, in a conventional bank, and the bank automatically generates interest. So we say, take the interest and dispense it in whichever way to get rid of it. You can give it to a school, you can give it to an orphanage, you can give it to the poor, and you don't have to mention the purpose of why you're giving this money. You don't pay taxes out of it. You don't pay your taxes or property taxes or you pay anything because you're not supposed to be beneficiary out of this. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Salma from the USA, welcome to Ask with Sister Salma. Assalamualaikum Sheikh, how are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for asking. Sister Salma, go ahead. Yes, I have two questions. So let's say if an older lady, she has some properties, um, she has a house, she has, her, she has some savings in her country, for example, India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh, uh, but she, she's living in the USA, she doesn't have any income. Is it permissible to... Uh, uh, apply for food stamps even though she has some money and savings in her country and my second question is let's say somebody has about fifty thousand dollars to um, um, invest what's the best way to invest those money in USA wow mashallah you trust me with something really I mean um, I'm not a businessman but let me see if I can uh, advise you but I'm not the right person to ask the second question, uh, definitely. Uh, Sister Salma is asking if somebody is living in the USA, he's jobless, he's eligible for welfare, food stamps. The same person is well off back home. They have properties, they have wealth, and they can live in the States well off through the income of their properties. They shouldn't apply for help or food stamps. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-mu'minuna ala shurutihim or inda shurutihim. 
So when somebody is giving you because you're in need, are you in need? Do you own a property and you have an income which can cover your expenses and more? So why do you take? Oh, because those people take taxes anyway and they are kuffar. I don't care about whom they are. I care about if you're eligible. Yes, you may take it because this is the policy of the country that you're living in. But if you're not eligible, uh, you're better off without it. So I always advise my brothers and sisters who live in, in the West, in non-Muslim countries, to be the true ambassadors of Islam. And subhanAllah, this is the ideal method of giving da'wah. Now you're not pretending, you're just being a true Muslim in dealing with people. Let me give you an example. Another example, Sister Salma. Some people, they build a good credit with the bank. And accordingly, credit card companies start uh, contacting them, reaching out to them, offering them, and they take credit cards. And they build up a good credit. Their credit limit reaches sometimes 100 grand, 150 with another credit card company. Then, after a few years, they collect the money from this credit card and the money from this credit card and they collect cash advance and they take off. So they go back home, they build a nice house on a nice property and then when they go back to the States or to Europe, they file for bankruptcy. By law, if you file for bankruptcy, then all the loans that you owe to the banks, to the credit card companies, if you don't have properties to be sold in the States, then they drop it because you file for bankruptcy. Is it okay? Some people, thinks, uh, some people think it is cool because this way I get easy money and by law because I, I don't have the money. No, you do have the money. And the money that you owe, you must pay off to Muslims, to Jews, to atheists. It doesn't matter what kind of faith, what kind of religion, the people whom you're dealing with. What matters is your religion, your faith, your condition. So if alhamdulillah, you're not in need, don't apply for it. Don't take it. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, if you have 50 grams, what can you do? Um, I just figured, subhanAllah, investment in in, in our countries is more worthy, especially in the real estate. It's, re it's really amazing that you buy a property for 50,000, next year you sell it for 70,000, a year later it can double. Uh, that doesn't happen uh, normally in average areas or neighborhoods in, in the States. But do not ask a person like me about investment. I'm not the right guy to, uh, to ask this question. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, last episode before Isa from Kenya, there was another question. One brother who said that, how can I make sure that at the time of death that I would not have a painful death? So when I finished, you know, I was about to answer this question, but we ran out of time. When I finished, on the way, you know how I had to report to my wife what was going on during the episode and what kind of questions, and whether she watched or I have to tell her. So we were discussing this question. And she said, as a matter of fact, I've been thinking about the same. And I've been asking Allah to make it easy for me. And um, so I had to say to her what I'm going to say right now. What I'm going to say is, brothers and sisters, in fact, the Prophet Sallallahu said in one hadith, لا يزال البلاء بالعبد حتى يلقى الله وليس عليه ذنب. So basically, that refutes the idea of, well, I want to make sure that I would uh, die in peace without any pain, without any suffering. But sometimes that pain and suffering is actually good. In what sense? The Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will continue to test and try his servant until his death. So when he dies, he dies pure and sinless. And this is a lot better than being held accountable on the Day of Judgment. The Hadith says also that when people enter paradise and they see the status, the high level of those who suffered in this dunya of diseases or ailments, 
cancer, liver, cirrhosis, renal failure, going back and forth to do renal dialysis. We're not saying do not seek the treatment. No, 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 seek the treatment. Ask Allah for shifa, recite, ruqya, take the medication. All of that is prescribed in our beautiful religion. The Prophet ﷺ said so. But you, you, you got to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us with those diseases, with those trials and calamities, suffering and pain, in order to remove some of our sins and even all our sins. So right before death, when the, when the test is getting severer, when the pain is getting severer and more intense, it washes off the sins of the person. So when he dies, he's, he meets Allah pure and sinless. So the Prophet ﷺ said, people who will be in paradise, but they see people in higher level. Why? Because they have been tried a lot. They suffered a great deal. So they wish that the, their skin, their lips were uh, clipped or pinched with clippers. They wish that they have suffered like them or even more in the dunya. Why? Because of what they see of the compensation. Watch. We don't ask for it. We don't call for it. We don't wish for it. We wish, as the brother said, and as my wife does. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-'afwa wa al-'afiyata fi dunya wa al-akhirah. Oh Allah, we ask you, afia, health, strength, peace, security, aman, uh, good condition. But if it happens, be patient. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Seek the medication. And keep in mind and anticipate that ما يصيب المؤمن من هم ولا نصب ولا وصب حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كفر الله بها من خطايا. Anything that afflicts a believer, even a thorn that pricks his skin, Allah subhanahu wa taala removes via the means of this system trial some of his or her sins. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Sister Amina from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada. Thank you. My, my question is, um, there have been clear indications of magic being done on somebody and they have, and they have started doing ruqya. How long does it take for the ruqya to cure the person? Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abu Aisha from Sudan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya sheikh. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you jazana wa iyaakum. Go ahead Abu Aisha. Inshallah. Ya sheikh, I have two questions for, for you today. One of them is that um, the two rakats that people normally play for, for Salatul Istikhara, is it a wife? possible just to make the dua without the, the two rakats? We, That's the first question. The uh, second question is, we missed your first if question. If somebody is outside of his family, for example, come again. Abu Aisha, we missed your question. Hello? We, we lost your voice for a while, so we didn't okay, hear Okay, the your first question, question is, oh, sorry, let me repeat then. The first question is, is the two rakats prayed for before the dua of istikhara is it part of the 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 the, the, the salah itself salatul istikhara or can it be waived is it obligatory to make the two rakas before you make the dua okay you get my question yep i did second question please. okay the second question is yeah somebody who is not living with family or with relatives but wants to get married how is it possible do we does he or she has to get uh, mahrams over or how, how does it work? Because I'm just thinking of the, the issue of the maharam being part of the requirement for a marriage ceremony to take place. And now you need to explain your question. Is he living with his siblings, you mean? Because the word family is very broad. It could be his parents. No. Yeah. Where... Yeah, I'm referring to where somebody is not living with any family member, for example, mm. but wants to get married. Baby is a man or a lady who wants to get married, but is outside of the country of his origin or 
doesn't have any relative or sibling or anybody around him. So well, how do how do that such a person manage the issue of the mahram? You mean the guardian for the woman? This is what is guardian, needed. Guardian, yeah, the guardian, the guardian. The of guardian, the, not the mahram. For the marriage, yeah. Now, what about back home? Does yes. she have a guardian? Yes. Does she have a living guardian anywhere else? Yes, they are there. Are, they are at home. Okay, if they are there, then we have to get his consent yes. over the phone, uh, video conference. He can see him and hear him and confirm that he is her dad, he is her uncle, he is the uh, the guardian, the wali. And he says, I don't mind giving you my daughter in marriage. Then we process the marriage contract accordingly. Barakallah feek, Abu Aisha. Khalid from the USA. Brother Khalid, assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Huda. Okay, not a problem. Try again, Brother Khalid. Sister Layla from Germany. Hello, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, doing fine. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Um, my question, Sheikh, is. Um, we are living now in Germany, and uh, the school here are offering a music uh, music class. It's part mm -hmm. of it's part of the curriculum, and uh, I'm 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 uh, my children are, are uh, supposed to to attend to attend this uh, this subject because they are they are receiving uh, notes for this, and. Uh, and now they are um, my, my 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 small children are I, I'm planning to put them in a special uh, music uh, music uh, lesson so when they get to to the to the, to, to, to level where they will be getting note in the school and they already know some know some some you know the, the some something about the music is it haram and my second and my second question is uh, uh, here in Germany. I heard I heard something that uh, the the minimal alcohol in in the food doesn't intoxicate and it is not haram to consume. Is it true? Because here in Germany we find sometimes uh, like a piece of cake or bread that's it's written uh, uh, with alcohol uh, content. So are we allowed to consume that or uh, okay. we are also forbidden to? And that's all. Okay. Thank you, Sister Lala. From Germany, your question along with the remaining questions will be answered, inshallah, when we return back from the short break. Brothers and sisters, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. intentions today issues around the heart how to be a leader how to understand yourself and others community is a diverse group of people how will you deal with the problems charity begins at home as a proverb would say how can we make a successful family among ourselves communication skills is one of the most important things that you should know how do we deal with the many conflicts in our lives today Join us on Huda TV in Youth Matters where we'll talk about different aspects and subjects related to youth and highlight the importance of youth in the development of the Ummah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There are so many stars around us nowadays in all fields, but there are real stars. On the course of 30 episodes, we'll be looking deeply 
into the lives of 30 companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This generation that received the light directly from him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they saw the implementation of the Quran by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They lived it and they passed it on to the next generation. We will be looking into their lives. We'll be looking into the life of Khadija Radiallahu Anha, Uthman, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, and so many other beautiful names and shiny stars. This is all on Huda TV. Join me. One day the Prophet ﷺ came out to the companions عنهم, and he said to them, Don't you bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and he has no partners? Don't you bear witness that I'm the messenger of Allah? Don't you bear witness that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the companions of Allah عنهم, they said, Yes, O Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, فأبشروا. Have the glad tidings, the great news as a result of this. Because the Quran has two ends to it. One end with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one end in your hands. Then he said to them والسلام, Hold fast to it because you would never be led astray and you would never be perished if you're holding fast to the book of Allah. Because of that, join us every week in Quran in depth where we recite and reflect and ponder over the verses of the Quran. We go in depth into the verses following the ways of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions when they used to take the verses, one set of verses after another. They would recite it, they would reflect upon the meanings of it and they would act according to it and then they would go to the next set of verses. Join us every week in Quran in depth so that we would recite and reflect and learn more about the book of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our life and to make us among those who follow the Quran and the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, our phone numbers should appear on the bottom of the screen. Brother Muhammad from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask Wada. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Go ahead. I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Go ahead, Brother Muhammad. Yeah. So uh, I have two uh, questions. One is regarding. So I have an account in India which automatically generates interest based on the money I have in my account. So what can I do with that money? And second thing is a request. Uh, I'm going through uh, a hardship. I request you to make dua for me. Inshallah, if you have a chance to wake up for the night prayer, make a special dua for me, inshallah. What is your, you know, I would appreciate if you can share your full name, like first and last name. With the brothers in the control, I like to make the dua with the full name because there are a lot of Muhammads, of course. So, inshallah, inshallah, uh, I will remember to include you in my dua. Barakallah fikum, brother Muhammad from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead, Sister Aisha. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. What is your question? Um, my question is, should we recite the um, Ibrahimiyah during, during Sunnah to prayers? Okay. Got your question. So yeah, I, that's my only question. No problem. Thank you. 
So if you're asking about as salatul Ibrahimiyya, yes, if you're, if you're praying two rakahs, whether it's sunnah or fard, then it's only one tashahud. So you recite as salatul Ibrahimiyya, you recite the full tashahud, uh, including Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad to innaka hamidun majid before you make tasleem. Uh, Brother Muhammad from India, the money that is generated uh, due to the interest must be taken out. You can distribute it upon the poor. Or as I said, in the previous segment, you can give it to a hospital, to a school, but get rid of it. Uh, now we have uh, Sister Amina from the USA. For how long do we make ruqya for a person who's confirmed to have uh, magic or suffering from magical spell? A ruqya is a dua. And you keep reciting dua and you keep reciting supplication until the person recovers. Okay? Uh, the second question from Abu Aisha, because I answered one of his questions. His second question was, al istikhara does it have to be with the uh, uh, two rakahs? Is it a must offer the two rakahs? In fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith which is collected by, ja which is narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him. That the Messenger of Allah said, إِذَا هَمَّ أَحَدُكُمْ بِالْأَمْرِ فَلْيَرْكَعْ رَكَعْتَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ الْفَرِيضَةِ So he said you should offer two rakahs, which are sunnah, not nafila. Uh, nafila, not, or sunnah, not fard. And then, ثُمَّ الْيَقُلْ Then let him say. So, based on that, yes, they are inseparable from each other. Unless there are some circumstances, like women doing their menses. She cannot pray. So go ahead and recite the supplication alone. You are in one shop and you want to make the decision right now. You don't have time. You don't have a place, no time to offer the istikhara prayer. You can recite the supplication alone. But uh, under regular circumstances, salatul istikhara, it's called salatul istikhara. You pray the two rakahs, then you recite the supplication. Sister Layla from Germany, with regards to music and learning music um, that is covered in full details in the previous episode and you will find it posted on my page in the previous episode which was on Sunday and I've mentioned even if there is a difference of opinion in this regard I highly recommend that you should check out this uh, uh, this answer uh, with regards to the percentage or the amount of alcohol which is added to food or beverage, uh, beverages, which makes it permissible to consume. So some beverages are not alcoholic beverages, but they add to it, you know, a drop or two of alcohol. Some food, some cakes, a lot of chocolate is actually uh, prepared with alcohol. Some vinegar is sensitized with alcohol and obviously a lot of medication. Alcohol sometimes is used as a vehicle, as an uh, excipient in order to make an emulsion for many of the medications. The answer is, number one, if you are the food processor or cook who is preparing the food, under any circumstances, you are not permitted to add even a single drop of alcohol. It's nages, it's impure. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, مَا أَسْكَرَ كَثِيرُهُ فَقَلِيلُهُ حَرَامُ وَكُلُّ مُسْكِرٍ حَرَامُ Anything which is categorized as intoxicant is absolutely forbidden. Even if it is a medication, it is absolutely forbidden. Whether it's a small amount or a large volume of it. So initially, if you are the person who is processing and preparing the food, it is not permissible to cook or marinate the T-bone steak or the uh, barbecue in anything which has alcohol, not even a few drops. General consensus. But what if you go to the market and you find, you pick up some cakes for the kids, food, uh, you know, for, uh, for your house, uh, ready made, and you find there is one percentage of alcohol in it, two percent, two percent, three percent, all of that it is permissible because this is insignificant. Compare between what I said initially, if you're the person who is preparing the food, you're not permitted to add even 
0.5%, not even a single drop of alcohol because it's impure, because it's haram, it's haram to purchase, it's haram to sell, it's haram to use, it's haram to consume. But if it is already uh, put and the food is prepared with it and you buy ready-made and you don't have the alternative, then if it is an insignificant percentage, it's okay to consume it, it's okay to eat it, some cakes, some food. Uh, if, and how would you know that the percentage is listed by law? And also there are some things which if you eat too much of it, you, get, uh, you feel like you get intoxicated, drunk. Why? Because actually there is a significant amount of um, alcohol in it. And now because consuming too many pieces of it, it makes you feel like you're high or intoxicated. Then absolutely this is forbidden. This is a sign that it has a great percentage of alcohol. لعن الله الخمر وشاربها وساقيها وبائعها ومتاعها وحاملها والمحمولة إليه والمحمولة إليه. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم listed like ten categories who are being cursed because they deal with alcohol, with خمر. And الخمر anything which is intoxicant, whether it is in the form of liquid, in the form of powder, in the form of injection, anything which is intoxicant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to what is best. Isa from uh, Kenya and I uh, end up with answering this question because we ran out of time. Alhamdulillah. He says some group of people accuse a lot of scholars and they tell them they should not follow these scholars because they are not uh, you know Salafi, they are not whatever. Oh, Don't listen to them. That's my brief answer. If you are going to criticize this scholar and this scholar and this scholar and do not listen to this and do not listen to that and this person has to get the certificate, the approval from a particular authority. You know, stop dividing the ummah. Stop dividing the ummah. I don't have to carry a badge or a name tag which says Salafi in order to be a scholar, or in order to be eligible to teach. Akhwani, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to teach people La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. We need to make things simple for people who are samakum muslimina min qabl. For a person who decided to follow the footsteps of our predecessors and to become, you know, the, the title Salafi, may Allah bless you, mashaAllah. You're trying to do everything according to the way of the Salaf, the predecessors of the Prophet Sallallahu This is great. Average people who only pray the five daily prayers, they don't pray the sunnah, they fast during Ramadan, they give their zakah, and they don't do much. They're Muslims, okay? Maybe they don't know much of what you know. Do not suggest to them questions in order to topple them, to test them in their faith in order to complicate things for them. Then you say, you're not Salafi. You're not following the path of the Salaf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen. A whole country, Southern of the Peninsula, may Allah give them peace and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them to live a peaceful life and stop the bloodshed in Yemen. Ameen. They were mainly people of the book. He said, Ya Mu'ad, invite them and call them to say La ilaha illallah. And if they say it, that means they understand what it means. فَإِنْهُمْ أَجَابُوكَ لِذَلِكَ And if they comply, then teach them that Allah has ordained upon them the five daily prayers. And if they comply, tell them about the fasting, about the zakah, and so on. This is the deen in, in, in very brief, very simple form. The bad one who came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, tell me what Allah wants from me. What did Allah ordain upon me? He said, five daily prayers, إِلَّا أَن تَطَوَّعَ Unless if you want to do extra. Fasting during Ramadan. Illa an tatawa. To perform hajj once in your lifetime. Unless if you want to do extra. Now if he said, I swear to the one who sent you the truth. La azidu ala hadha wa la anqus. I will not do more nor less. Watch nor less. I will just stick to what you said. 
So as he was leaving, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to his companions, whoever likes to see a man from Ahlul Jannah, look at this guy. You know, why is he uh, going to be from Ahlul Jannah? It's very simple. But he committed himself to do what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has ordained upon him. La ilaha illallah is very simple, not to associate partners to Allah in worship. We need to unite the people, not to divide them. Uh, you're a graduate of which school, then do not listen to this guy because his aqeedah is corrupt. Do not listen to this guy because he doesn't have the approval from my sheikh or your sheikh. It shouldn't be this way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what, to what is best. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance, and in your deen, allow me to advance. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate test. Help me in my quest, permit me to pass the ultimate test. Allah is my heart. Is what I beseech. Keep in my heart your remembrance and in your.